build and launch a satellite from scratch. He plans to enter the academic market next year and would be happy to connect during the conference. Um, so with that, Brad, take it on. Thank you. So hello, everyone. My name is Brad Denby. I'll be presenting uh, CODAN, addressing the computational bottleneck in space. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Krishna Chintalapudi, Ranveer Chandra, and Shadi Nagabi um, for Microsoft Research, as well as my advisor, Brendan Lucia, um, from Carnegie Mellon University. So to give you a little bit of background on space systems, um, satellites typically have been meters in size, thousands of kilograms in mass. They harvest kilowatts worth of power, and they cost hundreds of millions of US dollars each. And because each satellite is very, very expensive, uh, each individual satellite must operate with zero downtime for decades in order to recuperate that monetary cost. And so as a result, a typical satellite utilizes low performance custom specialized CPUs. However, over the last two decades, um, we've seen an exponential growth in the launch of nano satellites, which are orders of magnitude smaller in terms of size, mass, power, and cost. And as a result, these platforms can experiment with state-of-the-art embedded edge processors. So that distinction helps to frame uh, one of the long-standing challenges in Earth observation satellite downlinks, which is saturation. Um, during one orbit revolution, as little as 2% of potential observations can be downlinked. And as the satellite count increases, downlink bottlenecks worsen due to contention. And we expect satellite count to increase dramatically over the next 10 years, up to 300%. Prior work proposed edge processing of data on orbit in order to triage these excess observations, in order to filter the high value observations from the low value observations. Uh, but since a single frame consists of a very large geographic region, um, each image is split into tiles for processing. And satellites view new geographic regions before edge processing of the previous frame can complete. Uh, the animation here shows how uh, new observations outpass, uh, out outpace tile processing at the orbital edge. So a natural question is whether this problem can simply be solved by throwing more compute at it. Um, the constraints of a satellite makes this approach difficult, but not impossible. Um, however, just adding more compute, one, does not address the billions and billions of dollars of satellites that are already deployed in orbit. And also, the pace of new computer hardware is unlikely to address this problem for the next five to 15 years. So we're looking for a solution that we can deploy now to existing systems and to emerging near systems. So the goal of the CODAN system is to increase the data value density of this saturated downlink on existing and near future satellites. Um, specifically, in this work, we're considering Earth observation segmentation, where pixels are labeled according to the value to clients. Um, so for example, over two thirds of pixels are obscured by clouds on average, and most clients consider these pixels to be of low value. So, as a result, existing satellites, which are represented by the bar on the left here, um, they end up wasting much of the saturated downlink on low value data. Um, as an alternative, perfect filtering of this data has the potential to improve link usage by three times. Uh, but in practice, directly deploying existing filtering applications to satellite computer hardware provides less than 10% improvement. And this gap is due to a computational bottleneck Filtering applications are just too slow whenever they're deployed to the space edge in order to keep up with the rate of new observations. And we kind of saw that visually on the previous slide. Um, new observations outpace the rate of processing at the space edge. So with that background and motivation, I want to move into uh, the CODAN system design and how we improve that data value density of the saturated satellite downlink. So CODAN addresses the computational bottleneck in space uh, it starts with a one-time transformation step, which creates a filtering application from existing reference software. And then at runtime on orbit, CODAN dynamically selects software optimizations in order to filter sensor samples within the soft deadline. Um, so as an example, for a tile that's been sorted into an ocean context, CODAN would select an ocean specialized model to deploy. And for a tile that's sorted into an urban context, CODAN would select an urban specialized model to deploy. And CODAN modifies these original reference applications uh, using a collection of techniques uh, with a goal of meeting the soft processing deadline. And I'll walk through each of those techniques in the following three slides. 
So the first technique that CodeIn leverages is frame tiling. Um, this technique trades between execution time and precision. So as I mentioned previously, each frame consists of a very large geographic region. Um, in this example, one frame is a 10K image. However, the input size of a neural network is unlikely to be much larger than 1K, for example. So if you were to split each frame into four or 5K tiles, each tile needs to be decimated dramatically in order to meet the neural network input size. And as an alternative, if you were to split each frame into 16 2.5K tiles, you would have much less decimation per tile. Um, however, now your inference time per frame has gone up. You're performing 16 inferences per frame instead of four inferences per frame. So this cl creates a very clear trade-off. Um, more tiles per frame means less per tile decimation, which can have accuracy improvements. However, more inference overall. Um, we quantify this trade-off in the paper, and CODAN, the system, identifies the empirically best trade-off point for each application. Uh, the second technique leveraged by CODAN is per tile context specialization. Um, this technique is aimed at improving precision. So as an example, consider an ocean context, which is going to compose over 70% of tiles. And as another example, you have the developed land context, which is gonna compose less than 15% of tiles. If you train a model specialized to the ocean context, you can improve precision on those tiles. And training a model specialized to the land context will help you avoid discarding rare valuable pixels. So the chart here on the right highlights some of the evaluation results from the paper. Uh, the x-axis lists seven different applications that we evaluate. The y-axis lists the percent of remaining precision that's provided by context specialization. And we're able to capture between eight and 58% of remaining application precision using context specialization. And in the paper, we include much more evaluation of this technique. Uh, the third technique that CODEN leverages is per context processing elision. Um, so this technique also trades between execution time and precision. So as an example, consider a context that's composed mostly of uh, low value pixels. In this case, almost all of the pixels are obscured by clouds. And as an alternative, we have a context that's composed mostly of high value pixels. Um, and in this context, there are nearly no clouds. So when a tile is sorted into a low value context, uh, it should be discarded immediately without any further segmentation. That saves you on execution time. And as an alternative, whenever a tile is sorted into a high value context, it should be immediately queued for downlink without any segmentation. That again saves you on execution time. So both of these cases reduce average execution time by alighting that pixel segmentation step. Uh, the chart here on the right highlights some of the evaluation results from the paper. Again, on the x-axis, we have the uh, seven different applications that we evaluate. And on the y-axis, we show the percent of remaining data value density that the technique is able to capture. Um, this chart in particular shows results for the ORIN embedded GPU hardware target. And the paper we evaluate other hardware targets, including an i7 CPU and a 1070 Ti GPU. Um, and using this technique, we're able to capture between 35 and 60% of the remaining data value density with per context processing elision. Again, in the paper, we include much more evaluation of this technique. So now that I've presented the major components of the CODAN system, I'd like to conclude with a brief look at a selected subset of our evaluation results. Um, as a reminder, the goal of CODAN is to improve the valuable data transmitted through that saturated downlink. So for this set of results, uh, the target satellite we're using is a Landsat 8-like satellite. And what that means is that the target satellite shares the same orbit parameters, the same sensor characteristics, and therefore the same processing deadline as Landsat 8. And with the system, we can target any satellite. Um, the application for this set of results is the segmentation network with a ResNet 101 backbone. Again, in the paper, we have six other applications of varying computational intensity. Um, and the data set here consists of roughly 50% high value data and 50% low value data. So this data set is actually adversarial towards CODAN um, because CODAN performs increasingly better as the prevalence of high value data decreases. Um, in a realistic scenario, you're gonna see 33% high value data or lower. Here we use a balanced data set to support ML training best practices and it also allows us to report precision. So on this slide, I'm just gonna highlight uh, results from the NVIDIA Orin embedded GPU and its 15 watt power mode. 
Um, the reason I focus on this is because hardware of similar performance is likely to be deployed in a near future satellite. Um, it's also the most computationally constrained platform that we evaluate. The y-axis here is the data value density, which is that metric that we're trying to optimize with CODAM. And the x-axis spans different strategies for downlinking data. Uh, the bent pipe baseline on the left uh, shows you what the existing state of the art does. And then you can see right next to it what would happen if you directly deploy these applications to the space edge without any modification. So you get a small improvement but it's a limited improvement because of the computational bottleneck. Uh, to the right, CODIN achieves nearly ideal performance by leveraging those earlier techniques that I walked through in order to meet that soft deadline without affecting precision. So in this second chart, I provide some insight into how CODIN achieves these results. Uh, the x-axis spans different strategies for downlinking data, and the y-axis indicates the end-to-end -end application execution time per frame in seconds, and note the log scale on the y-axis here. So again, direct deployment of the application results in a very long execution time, and you miss that frame deadline, so you fall behind and you're not able to filter very many samples. With CODAN, it makes selections to adjust the app using those techniques I walked through in order to come in slightly below the frame deadline, and it's able to filter all of the uh, samples as they come in. Uh, and here, ideal filtering is any application that meets the deadline with a precision of 1.0. So if you look back towards the CODAN and ideal filtering light green bars, the difference there in performance is not in execution time in this case because CODAN is able to beat the, uh, meet the deadline, but it's actually due to precision. Um, so ideal filtering has a precision of 1.0, whereas ResNet 101, this segmentation network, does not have uh, perfect precision. Um, so we provide many more results in the paper, including, as I mentioned earlier, other hardware targets, uh, an i7 CPU, a 1070Di GPU. Um, we also include results for six other reference applications of varying computational complexity, and I encourage everyone to give the paper a read. So with that, I'll conclude the talk and open it up for questions. <laughs>